Hey guys, we're here at the Blackmore Ranch with another championship winning motorcycle and the jackass who rode it. That's me. Mr. Rick Johnson, the bad boy. Welcome, dude. Thanks for coming. Always a pleasure. It's always great to be here at Blackmore Ranch. I mean, amazing. Oh, we got the rainstorm because we're supposed to see Jeff Ward run his bike a little bit later on today. Yeah. And I'm not going to run mine, but always a pleasure to come here. And you're taking this home by you. This is a part of Hugh Parker's collection that, uh, I don't know how he got his hands on these things, but he's got some pretty amazing works of art. Well, and when I met Hugh, you know, you, when I first was introduced, oh, the guy from Zoom and this and that, and, uh, that. and then when I met him out at uh, on Rick Dowdy's race, I and mean, then Glenn Helen started finding out he raced motor when he was a kid, but then he went to college and became smart, <laughs> <laughs> then, then turned that into the other stuff. But his passion for the sport is about the motorcycles, the era. He loves that time because he was a young, uh, very influential, you know, for a kid and loved that time because gear changed p fox when he started with, with you know with, obviously took over from his dad's spot designing gear and different things and then we went to bright colors and everything so that was his generation yeah and so 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 when i think when he looks at these bikes at wardy's bikes and chicken's bikes and the stuff that he has it takes him back to that youth that good feeling when he's a kid absolutely and, I, and i'm the same way I'm, we're close up in age that i look at this stuff too and my eyes gloss over <laughs> what do you remember for this season this bike let's let's start with the bike because uh, I remember in our Whiskey Throttle uh, show episode, you talked about how this thing maybe didn't make the most power, but you guys got it to deliver really smooth, and it was rideable. So a couple things. One was at the end of 1983, I, I raced works bikes, the OWs, and had a terrible year. Broke my collarbone in January, dislocated my hip in May. Um, ended up coming back and winning the last national was Shugel, but I, I struggled on that bike, and Bob Hanna was so fast on that works Honda, uh, and, and that um so then kenny clark calls brock and i and because we were the two main riders and says hey we got some good news bad news and we're like what's that like well we don't have the budget to do worse bikes next year so we don't know what we're going to do we're either going to have you guys raise production bikes or we're going to buy your contracts out so brock and i are both over there going please buy our contract because <laughs> we're thinking double payday you know we're going to get paid for that year and go ride for somebody else um but they so they went with the production bike and so they took this um this bike, we started working with stuff. We had Bud Asklis, I had Cliff Lett. Um, we had uh, Ed Schuyler, obviously with testing. We had <clears throat> all the Keith McCarty. We, we had so much knowledge there. You know, the things that they did is that they took this bike, which I thought was a very, very good, comfortable bike to ride. It wasn't spectacular in the sand, but and like hard pack and like saddleback and Carlsbad and stuff like that. The geometry of the Yamaha always turned so, so good. Uh, the other thing was, is it had the roll on power valve. It wasn't like a guillotine. It wasn't like the trap door, like the Kawasaki or the guillotine, like the Honda. Those tend to hit harder. Like you go, because it goes from small bottom end, small exhaust port to bigger exhaust port to give you the top end. That's what gave us that range. Because back in the day, you said, what do you want? Do you want more top end? They open it up. It runs like shit at the bottom. Yeah. If you want more bottom, it, it run, the, the power runs out. So with the power valve, the two stroke that's what evolved now you take what they did so way above my pay grade but ask when and the guys from Yamaha said well and if we put a longer rod in it'll give it more volume than this I'm going oh, we're going to stroke the motor they're like no the piston is still traveling in the same place you know the same distance it's just up higher and it gives it more crank volume and it made it very very rideable so so on the slicker tracks and supercross it had the throttle response having to do with this hand now to come out of the quarters and get that little bit of jump okay. where the guys on the Hondas and Cowies had to use the clutch to soften that, that mark because your power, your main power was right at, at that point. Did it open, did it open it up or try, so there was a lot, there was a whole nother, no whole other thing. You could ride smoother and on slicker services and, and be in more control. And I felt I could quarter faster. That quartering was always kind of my, my forte. Um, good whoops, but we didn't have a, it was it either way from, depth to time and then jumping and stuff back and back in our day we did keith bull was the first one to ever blitz whoops and we could do it but it just wasn't with the, the forks flexing and stuff it wasn't it was a little more built perfectly like they were today you look at the tracks back then and it was like it looked like somebody just well a lot of times they just build the dirt up take a take a, a back hole it out go back and forth so it was really good until <laughs> just that wasn't good but but yeah so that that bike was was great. And the other thing that, that helped, I think, Brock and I, I mean, why we were so, uh, not dominant, but why we were so consistently fast is 
we got to ride the same geometry, the basically the same bike. Now, my, I didn't have the pipe and the and, and the long rod. I did have an Olin shock, and I did have the Simon's anti cab kits on the front. Because so that that that's as production as it gets. I mean, way more production than the guys have now. Now, if you notice, I did have a didn't they, they did let they did give me a front disc brake. But other than that, the thing the thing was pretty much stock except the Olin shock, um, and we got to ride it every week. So when we start off, boo, we're right there. Or if you had Bailey and Wardy, you know, they're riding production bikes and they're jumping on works bikes. Even though it's better, there's still that time to get ready. Yeah, it takes you some time to adapt to how to ride it. Yeah, right. Every well, week. Well, the, the the that's what got me at first with Hod is when I, you know, went to Houston. I was leading, but the power was so much stronger, and it just was faster. And I'm like, I'm, I'm off on my timing. I'm I'm fall off the back of the bike, or I'm doing this, doing that. And I, try to time jumps I miss time a triple and go over the bars and I said I need to ride this bike at least yeah. one, once or twice a week and that's what kind of started I think people getting the race practice bikes yeah chicken even mentioned on his bike the brakes were so much better on his works bike he would let off when he thought he normally would on his bike at home and he'd be 20 feet from the turn and almost stopped and they'd have to get on the gas again uh, so it's just it's tough to get used to riding it when it performs so much better than what you ride at home. Yeah, but when it was better, when it's that much better, like the the works Hondas were, those things, I'd rather Incredible. race race. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. Practice on a taco mini bike all week or race that. Uh, were you down on power to the Hondas or other bikes at that time? Do you remember? I don't think so. Okay. I I, I Pretty feel close. yes because I I ended up riding the works Honda and it it wasn't like it didn't feel fast, but it was like an electric motor. It was just butter all the way through. And it surprised you how fast you were going, and it didn't feel like it. This had great bottle, and uh, it and once they did the, the 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 longer rod and stuff like that, it gave me more top end. But I, I I never felt I never felt like I was was hurting on power. And how did that championship go for you? Take us through kind of just a good story of how that year went. So we started out the beginning down at uh, Gainesville, and uh, uh, won the first moto. And I told Kenny Clark, I met the guys from Life's of Beach, Mark O'Brien, Sibyl, well, Beaver, Thediasakis, at the Holiday Inn, and they gave me a bunch of shorts and stuff like that. And I said, oh, that was back when we were, were dolphin shorts. Everything was high and tight, stubbies, everything was really small. And they came out with these big bluers. And I said, you know, I'll wear them over my, my leathers as you know, kind of a joke and this and that. So I said to Kenny Clark, I said, hey, if I win the first moto, can I? He goes, if you win the first moto, you can ride naked. I don't care. You know, you do what you want. So... Win the first moto, come out for the second moto, have my uh, tiger stripes, the teal tiger stripes on. By the way, the guys sold out every pair of shorts they had <laughs> after that moto. So I start off, I'm out in the front, and then I had a problem, uh, broke, a, broke a, uh, a a line on my shock. And so I was bouncing all over the place. And so I ended up, I think, in third or fourth or fifth, I can't remember where it was. Then uh, went to Saddleback. I think I, I won the first moto. Second model, Lachine and I are Dyson, and I go to do the big uphill. And you had to, like, wheelie. It was a square edge or with a rock, and it caught, and I felt my wheel break. Oh. And I'm like, oh, shit. So my wheels broke, and I'm like, Lachine's there. And I come by, and I yell, my wheel, my wheel, my wheel, this, that. So we go up Webco. We come down, and I have in my head, a couple years ago, Bob Hanna just cleaned out Ken Howerton on the Magoo Double. So I'm like... There's my spot. So I go down, and I go a little bit wide, and I go, if Ronnie passes, because we had we had a lot of problems back then. If he passes me clean, I won't take him out. But if he even leans on me, he's done. And so if, <laughs> uh, then we never made it to the mood. To look <laughs> okay. I go out wide, he comes in, and I just, it's a second, third gear, and right before I get to him, I just go, whew. I just launched the bike. Like, I would have been disqualified for a year if this happened nowadays. I just let go of it, boom, because thinking I could either break his leg or break his bike, and I could pick up my bike and get over there, and he's, ah, you effing blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shoot, I didn't hurt him, you know? <laughs> so he goes on to win the race. I have to stop, change the wheel, and I think I made it back to, like, 10th or something. Like that. I, can't, I can't remember where, where I was. And... uh so then as the year went on, I started winning more and more and more. And then it came down to the last national um, at, at, at Hoshugo. And I knew, 
that I was in better shape than Ronnie, and I felt that I passed better. I was always good and going through going through the crowd um, than he was. He, if he got in front, he was so lethal. I mean, he was so fast, so smooth. It was really hard to catch him. And so I was leading him points. I start in first. Whoever was last moto is going to get it. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to I'm not going to try to go for a whole shot because I know he's going to come into me. So what I'm going to do is. As we come across the gate, I'm just going to hit him. And I'm going to pull us both back to last, basically to last place. And then we'll both go through. I'm strong. I'm better passing. That, that was my philosophy. That's a pretty ballsy uh, strategy. Well, because if he could have gotten out and got my clip me, I would have never caught him. Yeah. And so, so take off, boom, run right into him. And we kind of tangle. We get the first turn mid to the back pack. And I start working my way through it. I win the moto and I win the championship. And it was like, it was, it was such a great championship because of a lot of reasons. One, I had Cliff Latt who, who supported me when I was a kid. We used to race together. And when I was 14, he built a bike for me. He says, call my dad and says, oh, I like your kid. He, I like how aggressive he is and stuff. How do come ride my bike? And then, then he ended up working for Yamaha. And then he left the support team to come to work for me. So to win that championship with Cliff, meant the world to me yeah <laughs> to fight all year and have you know against an adversary who, who was unbelievable but a guy that i didn't like and that i wanted to be so you guys didn't get along back in those days no 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 he, he he opened his mouth up about girls and girlfriends and this and that he broke the guy code we've said dogger we're all good now we we buried the hatchet but that's the way ronnie was he was he raced hard I yeah mean, he raced hard really aggressive and if you gave him room it, it was almost impossible to catch him. I mean, he just was that fast, so you had to get physical with him and then kind of pull him into your gate. Uh, so, no, but I had nothing but respect for Ronnie, and it, it means a lot when you beat an adversary that makes you think so much and work so hard. Yeah. Um, also, to, to do it on a production mic, I kind of felt like I was screwing the industry a little bit because now all of a sudden they proved that you can't win a championship on a production bike. Now what's going to happen is everything changed from there on out. I don't think it's definitely not my fault, but I think it was good for the sport to cut, to bring the, to bring the money down a little bit. Yeah, I agree. And so, uh, it had to mean a lot to you. This is your first major championship, right? Mm -hmm. So what did you guys do to celebrate that? That had to be a big night. Yeah, probably like four beers and I was sloppy drunk. And, you know, I, I honestly, bit, I was like, straight as an arrow i didn't party that much but when i did i went pretty hard uh warning and i would typically at the end of the season at paris supercross we get like they said about three or four beers on us get sloppy drunk and be over the corner just telling each other how much we love each other and it's like dude i really you know that stuff about calling a midget and this and that and, and blah 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 really don't mean it you're just like a competitor and then we we're like best friends for the night i love you man the, the next day we're at the airport Screw you, screw you. We're going back to hating each other. But no, it was um, it was a big night for Yamaha. It was a big night for, for myself. I think it was great because Brock and I could work together again because he was on 500s, I was on 250s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so no, it was it was huge. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to share uh, just your stories about it. Uh, it's a beautiful bike. I actually did a tribute bike to this, a modern YZ250, just because I love the look of it so much. Um, and you mentioned one more thing. I love the yellow handlebars, by the way. Yeah, nod to Eddie Cole with the yellow answer bars. Um, but you said you came up with the half waffle grip. This was your move. So two things. One, Eddie Cole, you know, was making the steel bars. I said, I want, I like my a little dip down. I'm like this, I'm like that. And a lot of the, the modern riders are like, how could you guys be such goons with your bars back? But you don't realize the geometry of the older bikes, you would get head shake. Yeah, they were a lot shorter. And well, just the just the way they didn't track. Yeah. yeah so so you'd like be going out and, uh, and it, so you needed that to, for the strength and also the flex of the wheel and everything. So you had to put yourself in a, in a positive position because if you look at a lot of guys, they were they were back. But then from this point on, we got started getting stiffer forks and changing the bike up. We started bringing things forward. Yes, I did come up with the half waffle because I was running for Simo Silo at the time and they wouldn't give me gloves without padding. And so it just made my hands feel a little too fat. I was getting arm pump. So I took the grip and we would, uh, Cliff Lett and, and uh, um, Jim Felt would trade back and forth. Johnny liked the gear throttle the Yamaha had. And I liked the Honda grips because I hated the Yamaha grips. They were too stiff. And so we would 
Okay, you give them 10 throttles, we get 20 cents of grips or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, I need to do something. So we tried trimming them all off, but I didn't, I lost the traction on the front. So I'm like, trim the back off so it doesn't ball up in my hand. But when I hold onto the handlebar, it gives me traction yeah. back and forth. So Renthal and everybody else who's making those things, I'm waiting for my residual check. Royalty. Still waiting. to make out those royalty checks to Chill. Ricky Johnson. Yeah. Or Cash, my alias. Care of Whiskey Throttle Media. <laughs> like, I'll take them. <laughs> Take care of it. But no, thank you for having me. It's all it's 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 an honor to be amongst these guys, to be honest. You know, and I say that I'm not trying to to, to play the you know the the old for me humble guy. You know, I I was sat with Dylan Fernandez last night and what a great guy, you know, and talked to him about being booed, me being booed in France and him being booed here and and the and the different stuff. And so to be a part of this family that goes back to the DeCosters, the DeSotos, the and, you yeah. know, Jeff Ward, Brock Lover, Bob Hanna, and Lachine, and the the crop now is 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 very cool for me. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're part of an elite club, dude. So thanks so much for taking the time. As always, it's always fun. Uh, thanks for watching.